So, a few words about the Norwegian market as I uh, see it. Of course, it's a rich country. Many rich people are living there. And by rich, I don't, I, I, I don't mean like filthy rich, but most people living in Norway, we have to say that they are quite rich. Uh, earning a lot of money can actually buy whatever they want, wherever they want, so they are not like running around shopping for uh, low prices. So, what can then the companies do? They have to make sure that they don't have some spoiled staff working there. Like, uh, what we are seeing is that many people working directly with customers, they are not treating them well. We are not getting treated well. They are, they are like, I don't know, is it something about the Norwegians that they are not polite enough? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. They have lots of, lots of things learned. And of course, this is something that uh, now many businesses they have started to realize this. And they are contacting us. We are telling them we can provide you with some tools to help out. So make an order and we will deliver it to you very fast. We are using these type of cars. We want to sell hundreds of devices for each country. So how do we get in touch with those? <coughs> I think, at least from my experience, we need to help each other. If we know something about some, someone interested in some other country, we need to help each other. And I want to tell a little bit of one of these cases that I'm working on right now. This is a, the biggest by far uh, the food market chain in Norway based on franchises. They are having something like 600 stores around the, around the country and also some stores in other countries. I know Denmark. I'm not sure, is there something in Czech? No, no. No? Okay, so. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Well, they are very popular. <laughs> My friend Birger from Sweden, he knew one name in this organization, which he was kind enough to share with me. We went together to meet with this person. Had a very nice short meeting. Remember, it was so he gave us like five minutes, and I had to run. So we had to be very efficient and try to give him the message. That was something when I was thinking that, yes, Rehmatas, this will be the golden egg of the golden eggs. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, they wanted to, to have a small truck, two devices, even though for that, for what was it? So I gave them a very nice price offer, which they accepted, only they didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> said, yes, we will, we will take that, those two devices for no cost. This was a very strange situation for me. I never, never thought that I would be there like, I am giving one price and they are starting at the other end, zero. <laughs> they are not like discussing the price, they don't want to see the price. So, I had to think then what to do. What would you have done? Someone. I would have delivered the two units, no question about it. You would have delivered it. Absolutely, because your chances Every, your chances of getting a client when you don't have any pilot are zero. Your okay, chances so of getting is, a client when you do have it piloting and showing them results goes up exponentially in my opinion only. Was okay. this a first trial? This was a first trial in the first trial. Two devices. They have 600 stores. They wanted to go to try the two devices. I would go for it, but under the under the very specific conditions, for how long period, what I'm expecting of it, like <coughs> so what are we gonna meet and where it's gonna roll into the. Payment. I think I have had all those stores many times. Yes. <laughs> you you put a phone, Michael, in Denmark. <coughs> Why didn't I do that? Because they have had 
one year not try to roll out with Alema in Denmark. Okay. And we have the numbers and the figures. And he stopped. He stopped again. He couldn't see the idea. Oh. But it was one crime, one, okay. one shot. One, one story. In, in, in. Okay. At, at least what I finally came up with. Sorry, Mark. No, no, that's fine. Right? Okay. What I finally came up with was that I gave him the answer that the price is fixed. There would be no discounts. It's a take it or leave it. Mm. They took it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. A little different than the American yeah, well, market. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah. Europe, it's yeah. rude to say no. Yeah. I was thinking that. Yeah, that was close, you know. I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, what happened that. the next time? Because after this trial was done, which of course I didn't make any money there, it was like nickels and dimes. But this evaluation thing we had led to a new trial with 68 devices covering all 34 stores in one of the regions. So they're having two <coughs> devices per store, one device at the exit, and one device by the bread, bread department. Mm -hmm. Breads are filthy expensive in Norway. I think it's fair to say that they need to test it if this quality is good, because if it's not, <coughs> something has to be done. One bread is like, what? Uh, five euros. It should be a very good bread, though. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, anyway, what happened? They asked them for a quota for uh, these 68 units. Again, I gave them the price. I told them, oh, this is a very good price. There you go. No questions asked. Thank you, we'll take that. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that because I didn't give them any chance to negotiate the first trial, they know where I am. I know what I can expect from them, <coughs> at least for this small trial. And uh, of course, when they didn't, ask anything from the price they wanted to ask uh, they wanted me to, to tell them okay what's happening now I said we will ship this to each of your stores uh, but I will do it a little uh, different way I will save save some shipping money for you like less than half price and I will have all devices sent to their district <coughs> you know this <laughs> house yeah and I went there myself to which was 250 to drive, but you know I have this. You have this. Most happy. No problem. And uh, I did that work. That I, I took all those seven pallets, those 68 devices, checked the serial numbers, and I chose which device was going inside which store and which was going in at the exit of one store, and then they distributed them. But then I had the list ready, and I could set up this service very simple. Took some time. They got a very nice uh, uh, service from me. For them, you see, all they needed to do, to do was like sign the order, and I fixed the rest for them. So, I think that this was an investment in possible future income. So, of course, I was using quite much energy and time, and, and uh, maybe after all from this trial which is going on now for six months. I'm not making too much profit of that. But there is a potential. And if I can reach that potential, mm -hmm. I, I did tell you they are having like 600 stores. They have said to me that before New Year's they are having 600 stores. That means you can add 100 to that number, 1,200 units. Who will help me? Unpack it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically this is what I experienced. I, th I thought it was a, a nice uh, thing to share because it was strange for me, very new to this. So now I would like you guys, which are maybe more professional, to tell me what did I do wrong? What can I now expect to go wrong? To get this happen? How the hell am I going to get them to sign contract for 1100 units? 